Hello, everybody. Welcome to the QA recording of the film Instructions for Survival, playing as part of 12th European Union Human Rights Film Days. Uh, I'm really excited today to be joined by the director of the film, Jana uh, Ugrek Helice. He Hello, Jana. How are you? Hello, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, inviting and uh, have a good uh, screening. Thank you. And thank you uh, for being here with us today. I'm really excited to talk with you. Uh, before we start to talk, I just want to give a little information about Jana. Jana was born in Tbilisi, Georgia in 1984. After graduating with a degree in translation and linguistics in Georgia, she did her BA in communication design at the Peter Behrens School of Arts in Dusseldorf. She has a diploma in film and anim animation from the Academy of Media Arts, Col Media Arts Cologne in Instru instructions for survival is Yana's uh, debut film, right? First, yeah, yeah. First, first debut film. film. Yeah, and I think the last one. You know, there was such a stress that I, I don't want to make it one more time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that so, was enough. I'm coming really? from animational uh, world, from animation, and for me, it was very stressful to do the documentary you know because in animation you know exactly what is happening uh, there are uh, uh, your own problems in animation yeah. but in documentary you are just uh, filming and filming and filming without knowing what you get in the end you know and so that's not my cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. the, uh, filming a documentary is a lot different than uh, filming an animation or a fiction film I guess right because oh, yeah. it's so in an unknown area and you'll never know what will happen what we are going yeah. to face with so sometimes maybe that's the beauty of it and but sometimes that's why it is really hard yeah so, so one has to be one has to like it you know that exactly. it's a yeah. comes out everything on editing uh, in on editing table like a surprise there is a film or there is no film you know <laughs> yes yeah. yes you're right so do you have uh, anything else uh, to add uh, about yourself or should we continue oh, it's okay it's a, well, it was uh, enough <laughs> <laughs> okay okay great yeah. so instructions for survival uh, it was a really really uh I think for me, impactful and effective film for me. And I, I believe many, many people who will watch the documentary will be, will take, think the same because uh, it's, it uh, shows a, a harsh reality of a transgender person and uh, his love of life and how they are struggling through uh, in Georgia to be able to live their life. And I think uh, you show that in a really, really transparent way. So uh, I think it's a really, really effective documentary. First of all, I wanted to start with asking you, how did you decide to tell the story and how did you encounter with these people? Uh, so I knew these people for a long time. The protagonist is a, a good uh, friend of mine. So uh, we met before his transition. So, and it's not that we uh, planned to make a film. It was everything spontaneously. Um, I was uh, very often in Georgia uh, because my whole family lives in Georgia and uh, in one arrival, I discovered that they are planning to do this exodus from Georgia to Europe. And Marie was already pregnant. And uh, that was such a shock for me and for them and for everyone that we decided to document it somehow. And uh, one of the reasons was also that uh, they had to pass the border uh, in the airport in Europe and in Georgia. And uh, because uh, Sasha, he had uh, problems with his documents, uh, there was a risk th that uh, he won't be get, uh, he won't be let out uh, or let in in Europe because yeah. that's not a common uh, uh, case that a transgender is traveling uh, all over the Europe and having fun as a tourist. Normally, no one has money for this. So we backed up. The plan was that we will back uh, them up with the operator, with the camera director, Yule, 
uh, that yes, we are good friends, we are making film uh, and we are all together riding here and there in yeah. Europe and uh, that uh, how it worked then in the end. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I want to give a little information to our audience that the uh, they they are uh, trying to live in the country, but uh, at the end they decided to go because they cannot cope with the problems anymore, uh, because of the life they are living, because of their choices, which can be only decided by them. But unfortunately, public and their surroundings trying to decide for their life. So when they wanted to go out, they need money. So that's why uh, his um, wife uh, decides to be a surrogate mother. That's why she's yeah. preg pregnant. I just wanted to give that information yeah, 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 so yeah. they can earn money and they can go get out of the country, right? And so uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, it was, as I understand, it was a spontaneous decision to uh, film and to show their story but how was the process for you i mean i uh, it must be in, in a hard process for the, you and hard. for both them so can you yeah, explain yeah. a little bit about that yeah yeah sure that was very hard we cried together we spent a lot of time together it was very hard to uh, accompany mary and sasha the whole way that was very hard decision for them and the whole process for sure because when they stepped on this way you know that was the only way to get the money Sasha felt himself the whole way guilty and Mari understood they understood only then in process how hard it will be to uh, get uh, away from the baby that they have to give it up but so everything, this the whole mix that was terrible, you know, and uh, we cried a lot together. And uh, I guess the only person who was like working like a clock was our uh, cinema director, Jule Kramer, because he had she had this media between her and mm -hmm. it saved mm -hmm. her, you know, yeah, like yeah. she was concentrating on the picture and... Uh, that, that was uh, saving for sure. But the whole process, you know, we don't uh, even realize one moment how we got to Belgium all altogether uh, in a, such a stress that we, we, where we were working. And it was stressful in the streets to film in the streets because everyone came and asked what we were filming about, what is so special about these guys. And... Uh, we just made it once and then we stayed at home the whole mm. time and uh, we're, we're filming at home because it was uh, too much for yeah. us and for them both every time to explain or to talk to someone. This attracted attention and we were like all very tensed and uh, that's why the whole film, the most of the scenes are like in a shell in uh, in the walls in the apartment and um, it was hard yeah. to go out and um, yeah that's uh, the very um, hard period we had a hard period I would say but yeah. we uh, were all uh, very thankful to each other that we supported each other and we made this trip together yeah. And also, what would people say if you tell them the story of this documentary? I mean, that that would be really uh, maybe in a way dangerous, too, because in Georgia, as far as I know, and I, I figured from your documentary, too, uh, that people are not really that open minded. They, that they do not respect uh, the individual's life choices, especially for an LGBTQ uh, community. It's probably really, really hard to live there and to express their be beings, right? Can you tell us yeah. about that too? Yeah, How... I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. No problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Please continue. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to generalize, but I yeah. think the situation is a little bit same in Turkey as well. That is uh, deep in the culture. Yeah. And uh, even here in Europe, there are uh, homophobic people that don't accept someone 
who is different, who is thinking differently, and so on and so on. But here it is regulated by the government. You know, you mm. just cannot uh, break a head with a stone of a person just because you don't like him. Or you say that oh he's a transgender or queer and uh, and do do something uh, humiliate him. Uh, in our country, there is no such regulation, mm -hmm. so these people are trapped. It uh, uh, for sure it plays a big role where you are coming from as a queer person. To come from a big uh, city is something different. Uh, if you come from a small village, for example, mm. in a small towns and small villages, there is no chances to be yourself. One is dependent from the opinion, from the relatives, from the society. And the, most of the moments in Georgia, for example, everyone who comes from small towns they are uh, they free their families because that's a big shame and they move to a big cities to get anonymity yeah. to be anonymous and uh, most of them um, are if they have luck if they have good families that can support with money if they had good connections uh, good friends uh, they have chances course, to yeah. survive uh, um uh, like um, yeah honorably let us say so yeah. but yeah. if not they are thinking in prostitution there is no other way to survive unfortunately so the hundred percent of the guys so uh, male to female transgenders for example from the villages they are all prostitutes they are coming to big cities and they are all prostitutes because there is no way to earn money some, uh, somehow else and they're are even employers that would maybe take them to job in a bakery or in a restaurant or somewhere on a petrol station, but they are afraid as well mm -hmm. to uh, employ a transgender. And then on the next day, you have problems with the society. They will come with uh, uh, stones to your restaurant and burn it, you know? So it's there are some friendly island of lgbtq community just like in istanbul i was there that's absolutely open-minded uh, a big uh, city with uh, multicultural uh, um, stuff and i saw transgenders and gays and queer people and uh, a lot of young people that are having fun you go like in a small city and then the the situation is totally different so the, the same is in Georgia, there are like small islands, the clubs and LGBTQ friendly cafes and these and that, but this is not enough to support all the whole members of LGBTQ community. And the whole uh, inhabitants of the city, they are not ready to accept this fact, you know. Someone does not care, but there are still people who cannot live with the fact that someone wants to live by his own, you know. They cannot yeah. breathe, they cannot sleep, <laughs> So yeah. it's a, it's a uh, sign that uh, something's going wrong in our world, you know, that a lot of people are unhappy and uh, cannot deal with the fact that someone can be just himself, you know? Yeah, exactly. And the worst part is that if there are no sanctions, people who, uh, who are trying to destroy the people who want to live by their own rules they they want they know that there are no sanctions so they can do anything they want yes yes for sure because yeah. in europe i'm based now in europe and um uh, as i told already yeah. you, the, the you can call the police if someone uh, uh, says uh, something bad about you and uh, in uh, our countries, it uh, even the police uh, they are against, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. then are homophobes. So that's yeah. uh, that's yeah. bad, and uh, it is very difficult to understand where it's coming from. I still think that it must be regulated from above, exactly. at least uh, um, 
people will start to have a fear to humiliate another person and disrespect. But uh, also it has to be started maybe in the family as well. You know, if the family members does not don't respect uh, their own children and they think that the children are their property and they have expectations and you don't... Uh, uh follow these expectations they don't accept them because you know all these people they are uh the fathers and mothers who don't accept yeah and, and also they I'm, are not yeah safe. i'm sorry I'm, i just want to say something about that in the documentary sasha says that even if i was a drug dealer or a killer or maybe i even if i went and just uh, bleed somebody yeah yeah it, anything they would stand anything by, would by me yeah, but, yeah. anything but, would work but yeah. uh the 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 fact that he's transgender this is absolutely no goal uh so ruined expectations of the uh, mother and so they don't have a, a communication with each other they don't connect they don't so they he doesn't even know where she is she doesn't know where he is the only person who was this whole time with him was his aunt we see this in documentary as yeah. well i don't know if one could show this good or not but this is an, an only person that uh, uh accepted him as he was and that was not uh, uh light that was a difficult step for sure and difficult decision and it's a was a big work to to readjust everything and to rethink and to, to accept the fact okay now he is like this but still the love to your own person um was there and yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was really affected by the love between Sasha and Marie. I mean, that's the kind of real love we always maybe talk about. That's the real love. Uh, I mean, the, the, the way they support each other, the, the, the way they're together. And also uh, in a documentary, Marie says that, I guess uh, she was 16 when first Sasha yeah, yeah. told That's... him that mm -hmm. uh, why he is the way he is and why he wants to choose the path he wants. So it's it's really extraordinary, I think, that they're together from the start mm -hmm. and they face it all together. So I think it's it's really important also to uh, just show that part of uh, human humanity too. You know, I mean, it, this is not just about a person who is a transgender, but also this is a love story. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, uh, yeah. Uh, that's true. That was for me uh, also became for me a love story. Then in the end, the whole film it was not yeah. only about LGBT LGBTQ. Yeah. But about how can two persons love each other unconditionally, you know? Yeah. And the same was with the family, how easy it can be to uh and to to uh want to have a child, to love a child and to have a family. Because there are so many uh, children that are waiting for the parents in the wise houses and that want to be adopted uh -huh. uh, but no no one wants to spend a gram of love for these children because they are not biologically yours not mm -hmm. even a cent not a euro not a, no love just nothing everyone wants to have their biological child even if it is impossible so they are hiring uh, other people mm -hmm. to have their children yeah. than to 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 buy them and so i think it's too a little bit crazy you know uh, that the world is gone crazy that uh, you can uh, love your child only if it is biological yours and there is no other way and uh, and even perfect. even sometimes yeah. that's not possible we see, see that in documentary too even if yes, that child is biologically this, your yeah, child. yeah and then comes this information yeah. here please your biological child here your own blood no you're not accepting it because it is not as you wanted him yeah. to be 
So this is everything uh, I think uh, so crazy, you know, the whole world. Yeah, so I think you show these all aspects of these problems in this documentary. That's why I think it's really, really effective. And I hope people who will watch the documentary will uh, feel the same impact. And I hope uh, if there are people who are who believe in um, other type of uh, if have other kind of beliefs, I hope your uh, documentary will change their mind and change some of their ideas too. I hope that I mean, like I you said, uh, yeah. I hope that uh, the fact that we are talking with you like this is already yeah. a sign that something is changing, you know, in the world, because for uh, 200 years, we would be burned with you on the main square as witches. Yeah. Or so, <laughs> just because You're right. Sport, just because you are part of this uh, program, just because I am a big supporter and fan of LGBTQ community and so on and so on. And just because we are uh, women you know yeah. so it's the fact that the world is changing in 60s the homosexuality was healed with electroshocks in the United States with some medicines and blah 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 and now yeah. at least one can talk about this freely there are still like uh, uh, death penalties in some countries yeah. and so on uh, so still there is a lot of uh, things to do and to change or let's take our countries in uh, one club you can dance as you want uh, and uh, in uh, two streets uh, away uh, you your head will be broken just because yeah. you look uh, differently. So maybe it will be a long time like this but I see that the uh, when one looks in the back that the times are changing and a lot of things are changing. So it's it's good. Uh, yes. it, it is a good feeling. And as you said, the, the fact that we are now together and we are able to make such films and to do such films and to discuss this is already a good uh, sign. Yes, yes, yes. I hope it is. So thank you, Jana, for being thank here with us much. today. It was really, really uh, nice to talk with you about this important subject. So thank you again. And ho I hope to see you soon. <laughs> I hope to see you soon, guys. And thank you very much for your invitation. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.